I had a really, really, really rough day. And then, you know, I kind of just sat back a minute ago and realized, holy hell, I had a really rough day because I was doing nothing but learning all day. There was nothing that I was like familiar with. There was nothing that I was comfortable with. This was all 100% out of my comfort zone. And, you know, I feel like that's how you grow in this world is putting yourself in a position to be uncomfortable. Being comfortable is a luxury that I sure as hell don't have. And, you know, I feel like that's what got me to where I am now. What's up, everyone? Today is the day. We are finally going to start blueprinting a motor. And uh, this is going to be the one we're going to do it with. This is Kalen's 2004 Subaru STI short block we are going to start talking about. And this video is probably going to end up being a two-part video. There's no way that I'm going to be able to cram this all into one video. So stick around for part two because it is coming. This first video, there's going to be a couple main things we're going to be focusing on. One of which is going to be, we are going to be measuring out everything for this motor. The second thing is we are going to be balancing this rotating assembly. And by that, I mean going through and physically taking a weight on every single component and actually weighing it and then taking and removing some material where needed to get all of the components to be the exact same weight. Now, let me ask you guys, what do you guys think? Why would you do that? Drop down in the comments below, what is the purpose of balancing a rotating assembly for a built motor? I'm so curious to see what you guys have to think about this. So, let me tell you, I hope you answered, I hope you paused this video beforehand and actually physically wrote an answer because I'm curious to see what you guys think. So, what we, the reason we are going to be balancing this rotating assembly is because when you balance a rotating assembly, it is a lot smoother running operation. And uh, the big thing is, is not so much under normal conditions, but the big thing is, is if you start pushing the red line on the motor. To make horsepower on a big rotated setup or a big turbo setup in general, you do not have boost until around 4,000 RPM. So if you have a car that maxes out at, let's just say, 7,000 RPM, that means you have a 3,000 RPM window of drivability. So that's not exactly always the best thing, where when you're making horsepower, a lot of the times you end up cranking that rev limiter up a little bit to be able to make it pull more power higher into the RPM range. Um, with that being said, if you have a rotating assembly that has you know significant weight difference, it is going to shake around more inside of the motor. Um, a big part of this is going to be very, very, very meticulous. You have to be overly anal on this kind of stuff. And another big part of this that I can't stress enough is if you are measuring out your motor, you are going through and taking measurements, and I have special tools that I use for this, you are going to need to make sure that all of these components are the exact same temperature. All right, guys, so I went ahead and reweighed re everything. We really weren't that far off, but the whole thing is, is I now have a very accurate reading. So I'm going to go through and start removing some material and some parts. Um, basically, the pistons, the pistons are actually all within one gram, so inside of one gram. That's that's pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. And uh, I might take off a little tiny bit of material on the one piston just because it is, you know, the better part of a gram away from the rest of them. The wrist pins are all within a tenth of a gram. So those are very, 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 very accurate. So I'm happy with that. Basically the connecting rods are the big ones. Well, I've already moved, removed material off of uh, cylinder number three wrist pin yesterday, or connecting rod yesterday. And uh, the connecting rods were still, you know, we're still eight grams apart. So, I mean, that's, that's significant for sure. So we're gonna start Removing some material here and uh, just see where that leads us to. I'm going to kind of zip through this part because I'm in a time constraint. Just purely due to the fact that um, these connecting rods were so poorly balanced from the factory, I'll tell you, I am, I'm really disappointed. This is definitely not what you would expect from a company like Manly to be, you know, nine and a half grams um, off. That's that's a big, big, you know, difference for sure. So what I ended up doing was, you know, you're not supposed to take off a ton of material down here at all. I mean, Manly literally tells you 
not to take off material down here. I took off like half a gram down here just to try to lighten up the end. Um, and then I ended up taking it off on the sides of the I-beam itself. So I've just been taking the Dremel and just taking nice smooth amounts off the end here. Do not take off any more than you have to down here because there is not a lot of meat to work with. You're really going to want to focus on taking off material here just because this is where you have the bulk of the um, you know, material. Interesting enough, it's kind of weird to see that none of these connecting rods were balanced from the factory, so that's kind of weird, but um, basically we're just going to keep uh, going here, and I am going to, you know, when we're all done, I'll go through and I'll clean all this stuff up a little bit with some sandpaper by hand, just kind of deburr everything and make it nice and smooth. Got everything balanced out. Um, this is for cylinder number two. Um, you know, they're all basically the same. But we went ahead and removed a bunch of material, got everything flattened back out, smoothed back out, looks sweet. Um, so basically, all of the connecting rods that I physically myself balanced to match the connecting rod for cylinder number four are 566.7. And the uh, cylinder number four comes out to 566.6 is what it is. So we're within a tenth of a gram at this point. And that's a really good place to be for a balanced rotating assembly. You don't want to have to be removing 9 grams off of one of your connecting rods and 7 off another. That is not right. And honestly, if I was not on a time constraint of trying to get this done, I, I honestly would probably have considered of just sending the package back and getting a new one. Um, I mean, either way, they're going to get balanced out. That was the plan here was balancing these things. I will go ahead and the only one that I am going to do anything with for pistons is I'm going to take off like like no material on the piston that's cylinder number three is half a gram more than the rest of them i'm gonna just shave it real quick and it's just gonna be that um, when you're doing pistons the place you're gonna want to move remove material is going to be in here where the wrist pin would go on on the inside and outside um, you can actually if you look you can actually really closely you can see where they balanced it from the factory so we'll just go ahead and remove a little bit of material here nothing nothing at all crazy i mean like literally nothing that tiny tiny amount of balancing i did on that piston this is now it was 400.6 which is within uh you know three tenths of a gram from everything else so this is good enough for us and uh Basically, from this point, we can start looking at cleaning off everything and uh, start assembling or working on assembling the rotating assembly. All right, guys, so everything's cleaned up. We have our fastener sitting here soaking in oil, and we have our King Race bearings opened up and ready to go. So these are the first time I've ever ran the Pmax coated bearings in anything, and I'm really looking forward to it. This is basically a ceramic coating on the bearing itself, and that helps the bearing basically hold up in severe conditions just a little bit better and i mean in high performance applications the you know most minuscule amount is the big amount you know so it matters a lot so we're gonna do uh these p max bearings and basically um i'm gonna go down the line here these bearings are numbered one through eight we are gonna use one and two in in uh, connecting rod number one so on and so forth so we can keep track of this and then we'll go back and we'll measure these and if we need to take them apart to get our tolerances, you know, where they need to be, then we will.
Okay guys, so something that just occurred to me is that you guys probably don't know how to use one of these. You're huddling the uh, journal here and you're going to basically keep your, end on, your finger on the end of this thimble here and you are going to rock back and forth and watch the end of this and you will go from seeing it go basically perfectly flat to having a gap. Keep rocking it, keep rocking it. Find that nice happy median lock it in place with the lock here and we'll pull this out so i have a yeah exactly 2.3620 which is exactly what i had before so that is how you're going to do that you're going to basically just be slipping this thing right around here and going for it so yeah you basically should be at a point where it's not tight, tight, but it is, uh, you can still move it, but you're feeling some amount of resistance in here when you're doing this. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this case halves open and we'll start uh, slapping some bearings in there. All right, so same deal. We're gonna go ahead and throw these King race bearings into the block and we will seal the block back up. And uh, once we get that all done, we'll get some measurements. Um, same thing basically goes for in here. You absolutely want to make sure that uh, all your journals are nice and clean beforehand. All right, guys. So this next step, we've got the uh, bearings all inside the block now. And um, basically everything's just positioned inside of here. Set up just like you would normally do it. Tangs in the tang spots. Put it together. Put the studs in it or the case bolts in it. Glue it together. We're here. Okay. So our bearings are just in the block. We have our dial bore caliper that we're going to be using here, and uh, there's different size, there's different size collets that you can use for different size bores, and then you have these little adapters in here as well. Um, the big thing with these is, what is this, Johnny? Ooh, fancy! I don't even know what this is for. This must be for really big ones. So um, <clears throat> the big thing is here is what we're trying to do is we're trying to get in here and basically zero this is what we're looking to do so we'll get in here and we're going to go and this keep in mind this bearing there's two ribs here there's two you know parts of the bearing so we'll get to the very top of it and we'll get in here and basically we're going to try to get right in the center of that bearing you know whatever angle you're looking at here so like for example here we're going to try to get right into the middle of it And we're looking to rock this thing just back and forth just a little bit and that rocking it back and forth will help us find the exact zero mark and then once we find the exact you know the highest point you're looking for the biggest number here so once it gets to the highest point you set your zero So I have my zero set and now basically I have my micrometer sitting here in this vise and it's a micrometer vise and basically what we're going to be looking to do is get in here and so if we set this in here right now it's pretty close because I was playing with this earlier it's pretty close but basically what we're going to be looking to do is use this to get in here pop this in place I'm actually going to set this down here so we don't break anything and set this in place here and use this micrometer to zero out your dial bore gauge again meaning that when you're you're gonna turn this up until this is reading at exactly zero pegged on zero and that means that is your exact reading you're getting out of this block all right guys so it's like 10 o'clock at night um, I am struggling big time here. I'm not even gonna try to front you guys. This is uh, this is the first time I've ever done this. I've never I've had all these tools to do this for a long time. Bought them a long time ago. Big plans of doing this all the time, and I do have big plans of doing this all the time. But being as this is my first blueprint, there's just a lot to learn, and I'll tell you, 
It's not just learning how to do the blueprint, it is learning how to use the tools. So here's what I have learned so far. Basically, everything I thought originally incorrect. So the proper way to do this is to be using your outside micrometer here and getting a measurement on the crank. Whatever journal, get a measurement. Set this back down in your vise. Use your dial bore gauge, your outside mic, whatever, and get this zeroed. So you turn the dial on here when it's inside of here to the, and you move it just slightly to get it to the biggest number and you move your zero to line it up to here. So this is then zeroed to this number. Then you would be going and taking and actually then sliding this down into the bearing and seeing what the difference is. And that is your oil clearance. That is the proper way to do that. So now that I have a better understanding of how this works, I am going to take this crank out of here and I'm going to show you guys how I actually am going to do this on a connecting rod and we will measure out the connecting rod and I'll show you guys the proper way to do this. We're going to take a connecting rod and this is the connecting rod for cylinder number one just so we're all on the same page. So when I measured the crank, when I measured the crank for cylinder number one, I get 2.0466 as my number. So then I would come over to here. So we will set this outside micrometer to 2.0465. Cause my number was 2.0466 was the actual number that I had. So then basically the move here is going to be taking your mic and when you have this in here it will line up with zero and you want to make sure you're as centered as you can you'll rock it back and forth a little bit to get to the biggest number and we are at zero okay we will not measure from here to here we will measure from here to here this will be a big gap. This will be a small gap. The oil is supposed to pool in the splitting point of either the case or the rods and move around the bearing accordingly. So if you guys can see, if the more we rock it, and you're going to try to get this right in the center, but you have to rock it just a little bit. And there we are at two thou. So we have two thou of oil clearance on our connecting rod. And I believe that should be exactly what we're looking for. Everything up to this point has been extremely systematic. Everything has been, exa I mean, exactly exact numbers. Um, as far as the main bearings, we've had 1.9 thou for 1, 3, and 5. And we had 2.1 thou for 2 and 4. So both of those are over factory spec, but they're at a point where they are very good numbers for a built motor. So for connecting rods, you're looking at 0.7 thou to 1.8 thou is what you're looking at for the standard clearance. The limit is two thousandths of an inch, which is where we're at, which for a built motor is good. So per Manley's instructions here for these connecting rods, they're saying, the following clearances must be maintained to ensure proper connecting rod performance. The big end housing bore is sized to provide proper crush. Connecting rod bearing to crankshaft clearance should be set to at a two thousandths minimum and a three thousandths maximum during assembly. Side clearance on both rods should maintain fifteen thou to a maximum of twenty five thou per pair. Recommended side clearance. Well, whatever. So basically two to three thousandths is what we're looking for for rod oil clearance. So we are there. We are at two and that is good, good, that is good. So um, basically we'll go down the line and we'll measure these things up. And that is pretty much going to be the extent of it. Um, the next stuff we will talk about will be physically 
measuring out, um, you know, the pistons and everything like that to make sure everything's proper. Obviously, the machine shop does that portion of it, but this is basically to go back and check their work. So this one's good. I'm going to go run through the lineup quick and do the other connecting rods. And I know this has kind of been a boring video in the way that, you know, there hasn't been a ton of action here. But the hardest part is here is I can't have every single video I put out be me teaching you guys because I'm going to be frank with you guys. I am learning a lot of this stuff too as I go. This is not something that I'm just like, yeah, hey, call me IAG because I build 56,000 motors a minute. I just don't. So, you know, this is all every time I learn something and then by the time I'm ready to build another motor, it has been a while usually. So... I forget most everything I learn every time. Um, this isn't something I'm doing this every day. This isn't something that I'm telling you. This is 100% the best way to build this motor. You're never going to do it better. No, this is me telling you this is how I'm doing it. I'm basically just doing this to make sure we don't have a problem. This isn't me trying to go in and spec out and we're going to be at exactly 69 degrees per square inch of the Celsius cer certificator circumference circumcision you know i ain't that guy it's just not the case at this point in my life and honestly this is a pretty giant step for me to begin with so i have at this point spent 10 hours today working on this motor alone i have spent a lot of time i a lot of time balancing the rotating assembly a lot of time specking these bearings out and trying to get this stuff figured out don't forget, guys, our giveaway is live. We are absolutely giving away all these really cool things. Force Performance FP Green Turbo. You can go and make some great horsepower for your car. Do not sleep on it. It is going to be done April 7th at midnight, 12.01 a.m. So pretty much April 6th at midnight, we're done. So don't forget to get on that action. There is going to absolutely be a second part to this video. I am absolutely going to continue showing you guys how I am going to assemble this thing, how I am going to go and, you know, like I said, we'll do piston ring gap. We'll do all that stuff. We'll assemble this motor. I'll show you guys proper torque specs. I'll show you guys all of that stuff for a built motor. But for now, we're going to call this done. This is, um, you know, as much as I can get done for now. I appreciate you guys watching. I can't tell you guys enough. Thank you for watching. I hope somebody learned something here. I can't stand putting out useless content, and I don't want that to be what this is. And I really do hope somebody learned something here because I'll be honest with you. I learned a ton today. I had a really, really, really rough day, and then, you know, I kind of just sat back a minute ago and realized, holy hell, I had a really rough day because I was doing nothing but learning all day. There was nothing that I was like familiar with. There was nothing that I was comfortable with. This was all 100% out of my comfort zone. And, you know, I feel like that's how you grow in this world is putting yourself in a position to be uncomfortable. Being comfortable is a luxury that I sure as hell don't have. And, you know, I feel like that's what got me to where I am now. We'll continue with this in part two. Please stick around for it because I promise you... I will make this video better. It is going to be a lot more informational than this has been. But for now, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys immensely for watching.